can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Jeffrey Riznar of 898marketing.com. And Jeff, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. And we're going to talk, I mean, Jeff has a cool background in the USFL. Um, He worked for the Cleveland Cavaliers and uh, also is just an avid sports fan. I had a the, I guess is considered the founder of the Orlando Magic, Pat Williams on, and uh, he talked about how he went door to door trying to pre-sell season tickets to get yeah. the franchise in Orlando. And he had some amazing stories there. So check that one out. And, and since this is also part of the top agency series, um, I always like to mention, I did an interview with Todd Tasky, who um, has also has a podcast, the Second Bite podcast. Uh, but he ba- ma- matches agencies with private equity and helps mm-hmm. sell agencies. And he talked about valuation and all that fun stuff, but also how some of the agencies make more in the second bite than they do in the first. Once they sell the private equity and the private equity sells, they make sometimes more on that second sale. So check that out. And and many more. Many more. Uh, Kevin Hurrigan also talked about he has been an agency owner since 1995. So that was interesting to hear the evolution and in, in how that uh, all went down as well. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that? We actually help you run your podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast. We do accountability, strategy, and full execution and production. And Jeff, we call ourselves kind of the magic elves that work in the background to make sure everything happens. Um, you know, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to profile the people and companies I most admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. We've been doing it for over a decade. So happy to answer your questions. And without further ado, we have Jeffrey Riznar. He's founder and CEO of 898 Marketing. Uh, 898 Marketing is a strategic integrated marketing agency and they were recently recognized as one of the Inc. 5 Magazine's fastest growing companies in America and one of Adweek's fastest growing companies. And we're going to dig deep um, on culture because I know Jeff focuses a lot on culture and they are ranked among the top 10 places to work in the state of Ohio as well. Um, and he's over 20 years of experience delivering results for brands like the Ford Motor Company, General Motors, the Cleveland Clav- Cavaliers, and many, many more. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a great, great Wednesday to be here, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Tell me, uh, tell us more about 898 Marketing and what you do. Yeah, so I, you know, we're, as I, as you mentioned, we're a strategic marketing integrated agency. So everything you need from uh, advertising and marketing services we provide, but we do it a little bit differently. Um, you know, one of the things that I appreciate about our agency is the transparency and the accountability that we focus on. Uh, we're not hesitant to say that, you know, we're not we're not achieving the results we want. Don't worry about the retainer this month. We didn't earn it. Um, and I think that's something big in terms of the accountability side of things. It's very easy to say and to 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 say what you're going to do. It's harder to perform that task and live up to the investment that someone is making in you, because that is exactly what it is. They are investing in all of your talents and everything that you promise to deliver. So um I usually say that all all marketing agencies are the same. We all do the same thing. And I'm not downplaying any agency um, because there are some better than others. But the way the thing that makes them stand out, I think, is the culture that they have and their attention to detail of how they're accountable and ingrained with their partners who trust them. Uh, We always say that, you know, I learned a lot of great things from Dan Gilbert and the Cleveland Cavaliers and Len Komorowski and Tracy Merrick, who were my mentors and leaders there, and Carrie Bubles. But the, the a couple of the sayings that they have stuck with me, and, and one of them is it's not about who is right, it's what is right. Always understanding that those tough decisions that you make ultimately end up with the results that are the right thing to do. And it might mean that 
It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't get a big enough ROI on it, but you might not have a long-term relationship, but at the end of the day, you're there to make the right decision for those individuals. And I think all 30 team members at 898 Marketing pride themselves on doing that day in and day out. We're going to talk about culture, hiring, but I have to ask, what was it like working at the Cavs? Oh, it's fantastic. It was a dream come true. You know, I, I tell everybody, you know, I had a dream that I, you know, the difference between a dream and a goal is dreams are fleeting. You know, you wake up from a dream and then you can go back to it. Goals, you have an actual process in place to help achieve that dream and to make it real. Well, I had a dream that I would be in professional sports. Um, my, my height prevented me from living out my dream in the NBA, but my goal still allowed me to achieve that as being their director of strategic marketing. And it was absolutely everything that I hoped it would be. And then some, um, not only working there and working with the players and the luxury of saying and the, the pride that you have in saying you work for the Cavs at that time and even today. Um, but it was the relationships that I made, Jeremy. You know, those relationships far outlasted any financial or rewards that that we had or any victories that we experienced with LeBron and and during that time. So it was uh those were those were my trophies or the relationships that I was able to carry and still have today. What was a favorite story? From that, do you remember any stories? I don't know, not necessarily locker room <laughs> stories, but what, what's a favorite story? Uh, we'll we'll keep we'll keep the locker room stories private. You know, those are my memories, right? Like everybody has the rings and things like that, but those are my private memories that I have. Um, but one of the things that I love the most about it was it was there was a there was a a, a promotion that we were doing that we were giving away a golden bobblehead, and one of my one of my closest friends, Joel Lehman, who is now a part of 898 Marketing, um, put the whole thing together. And seeing a bobblehead promotion come to life, but then to throw that little Willy Wonka-esque approach on it gave me a whole different perspective of how a normal approach to things can truly be re-energized and reinvigorated by looking at it just a little differently. And it's just not a bobblehead. I thought it was something that we can play towards and leverage towards anything that we do from a marketing perspective. And to watch that promotion really galvanize and take shape. Um, and then to realize that the small things we do, the inches are everywhere around us, those small details actually make the biggest difference when you're doing campaigns like that. So it was fun to watch, but honestly, there's so many stories about my team members, and and the victories and the late nights and the basketball pickup games at 6 a.m. Um, you know, that whole time was a great memory and a great story. I love the creativity of that, Jeff. And how did that work? Like if people came in the stadium, they were given bobbleheads and there was like one yeah. golden bobblehead that yeah. someone would get. Yeah. So when when they scanned their ticket, everybody was entered in uh, automatically. So everybody got a traditional bobblehead. Um, and then what we did was at halftime, we pulled 23 numbers of people who were in the stadium. Um, we also opened it up to individuals who were not there. So all of the entries that came in prior to, so it was all legal and all on the up and up. And we randomly picked 23 people and they got a, uh, a gold painted version of the bobblehead that everybody else received that night. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, you know, my, my father-in-law always said the best department in any business is R&D rip off and duplicate. If it works, <laughs> right. if it works one place, it's going to work somewhere else. So, you know, uh, we're looking forward to doing that with the USFL this year with the Pittsburgh Maulers. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun time. Um, how did you get the name 898? Well, I, um, I know you might not believe it because my hairline makes me look uh, decades older, but I'm 43. And so the name 898 marketing started 40 years prior to that. When I was three years old, my grandfather who was one of my heroes, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at Michael Jordan or uh, athletes or movie stars as, as the people who I wanted to be when I grew up. I, I had four heroes, my two grandfathers, my father and my uncle. Those are the men I wanted to model my life after. And my grandfather on my mother's side, my maternal grandfather and I became very close. And when I was three, he told me to point to three numbers. So I pointed to 898. And he played that in the lotto every single day, every single day. Now, he was a hardworking man in the steel mills of Youngstown, Ohio, um, but he knew how to invest his money. And he really enjoyed the financial side of his lifestyle about that, that, that hobby that he had. 
And so every time he hit, he would invest it. So fast forward, when I turned 13, I started cutting his lawn to work to earn my own money. And we would sit on his front porch and just talk afterwards. And he had told me the story of what he did. And he said, when you turn 16, I'm going to buy you a truck. I'm going to buy your own lawn care equipment. And you're going to start your own company. And I'm 13, Jeremy. All I heard is I was getting a truck. And then he turned in like a <laughs> peanuts teacher, right? And they just wah, wah, wah. Um, but he you didn't hear the work you part. Heard, you just heard yeah, the no, 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 no. I heard truck. I heard truck, Jeremy. I was going to be in high school with a truck. That's all I heard. Um, but he told me I'm doing this for you for three reasons. He goes, one, God gave all of us gifts that are unique and special to us. The second reason is that those gifts are meant to be shared with the world to help others. And the third is that if you do it well enough, someone is going to find value in it and they'll invest in you. And you'll never work a day in your life because you'll be doing what you love. Four days before I turned 16, he passed away on that very porch that he told me that story. And unfortunately, I never got my truck. I never got the lawn care equipment. Um, but I knew I was going to start my own business. My dream turned into a goal that day. And I knew that I was going to have 898 laundry mat, 898 burgers, whatever it's going to be. And it just so happened that uh, it led to 898 marketing and me sitting with here with you today. And um, building a culture centered around the idea that we are called to serve in our capacity of capabilities and gifts that we have. And that's just not to our partners. That's the communities we surround ourselves with. That's our family, our friends, uh, that by doing so with those gifts we have, this world's a whole lot better off. Thanks for sharing that. I'm sorry to hear about your, asking. your grandfather. Oh, um, I appreciate it. He's with you, me every day, his, man. His uh, memory lives on, his dedication oh, lives you are on, lying. obviously. You are lying. Um, Talk about people. You were saying what makes companies so special, obviously, even in the agency world is people. And we yeah. can talk about culture, but how do you um, run the hiring process to attract great people? Uh, so we have a team internally that does all the hiring. Um, I, I leave it to them to, you know, job descriptions and things like that and run the initial interviews and narrow it down. Uh, once we start bringing individuals in, we not only evaluate them based on their skills and talents, um, but I like putting them into conversations with their contemporaries and people who are in those positions or fields and give them kind of an unfiltered Q&A. You know, ask anything you want. I, I truly believe you got to peel back a layer of the onion in order to see exactly what you're getting. And I don't want them to be surprised. Uh, it's one of the rules we have in any meeting or any if effort that we have is my one rule is no surprises. So by the time they get to me, Jeremy, they're already vetted and already, already have accomplished the, the, the difficult part of it. When I speak with them and I speak with everybody that we, we hire and bring on board from an intern all the way up to a C-suite executive, you know, I want to see who they are as a person. I tell everybody that we can teach design, we can teach videography, we can teach SEM and SEO and web development. I can't teach you to have empathy. I can't teach you to be a good person. I can't teach you to raise your level of awareness to see that something needs done. And even though it's not in your job description, you helping out is going to help others. And that's what we're here to do and to be a quote unquote team player. Um, and I don't want to use buzzwords, but I don't think that is one. I truly think that you're a part of a team. Um, and I, and so when we get there, one of the questions that I love asking uh, the new team members is, if I were to tell you not to come into work today, and you had one day to do anything you wanted to, and 898 Marketing would front the bill, how would you spend your day? There, are, there is no budget to it. Just how would you spend your day? And I love that question because I get to find out what is truly important in the lives of those individuals. Some of them want to go, some of them say they would take a trip, some of them would go shopping. Um, but the majority of them, it's interesting, they would want to spend time with people that they love. They'd want to hang out and go do something that reminded them of people who maybe have passed or are no longer in their lives. Um, but it also gives me an idea of how to reward them with small and improvements because everybody's different. Not everybody's driven by money. Not everybody's driven by time off. Some people just want to go get a manicure or a pedicure. Some people want to go sit on the floor seats and watch the Cavaliers in the playoffs against the Knicks, right? So understanding what motivates people, but also how they're programmed with that question achieves not only the, the idea of seeing what type of person they are, but also provides some insight into 
how to reward them as we move forward because they're going to be a team member and they deserve a trophy if they've earned it. So what's their trophy look like? Um, you know, I, I've, I've switched from calling them family members to team members. Um, families, <laughs> families, you don't get to choose your family, right? You get them and you're with them for good, better or worse, right? Team members, if you're not performing, you get traded. If you're not performing, you get waived. Um, so that idea that there's still a performance-based issue around it, but you have to you have to gel with those other individuals is important. And I think the nomenclature behind that is important as well. We mentioned culture, and obviously mm-hmm. you've been ranked uh, among the top 10 places to work in Ohio. What are some things that you do to um, ingrain, you know, and, and create a culture? Uh, everybody's voice is heard. Um, you know, when we were doing, when we were in COVID, um, you know, we discussed how we were going to approach it. We made sure everybody was comfortable, um, even coming out of COVID and with the inflation that's happening, you know, we went to our team, I went to our team members and said, look, here's your two options. We can give you two days to work at home. Um, or I could give you more money and I could give you all bumps and pay above and beyond what we normally get each year. And I said, the only thing is y'all have to agree on it because this is this is what you all are going to be doing. And to their credit, they came back and said, let us just work from home two days a week and we'll have a hybrid model. You keep the money invested in our company and help us grow. We don't need more money. We just want more time. So it's small things like that, that you don't assume you know what's best for them. You don't assume that you know what their thoughts are and what motivates them. You have them be a part of that decision making process. Um, and I think empathy is the key word that all companies need to embrace moving forward, uh, understanding how it makes that other person feel and then taking that. And then the, the real equation is taking that and incorporating into is what's best for the organization as a whole moving forward while maintaining that understanding of how this will impact those individuals. And trust me, as the more and more we, we add team members to our organization, the harder that becomes. It's not lost on me that that is a that that's a utopian thought, but it's very hard to implement. Um, that's why you know ideas are are praise, but but implementation is worship. So that idea of a culture that embraces each individual and gives them a voice, while also maintaining the growth and expectations of excellence, uh, is what we try to achieve every day. When you hire, are you looking strictly local? No, no. No, we have people who work for us in Maryland, um, in Cleveland, uh, on the west, in Columbus, Ohio, and our offices are in Youngstown, Ohio. And to put it in that perspective, uh, our 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 we have team members who live as far as five and a half hours away from our offices. Um, I do not think that. Being in the office every day is mandatory. I do think, though, having an office and exuding that culture virtually is what is necessary for a group to sustain itself. And so even those individuals who are work at home and and virtual, they still come to our office uh, a a couple of times a month because I want them to be feel what that is and also to be accepted and to be united with those individuals that they're working with. So. Um, it's, it, location is non-existent. I think now it's understanding how an individual's own moral compass and compass of, uh, dedication and time management is, is important with, with earning that trust to work virtually. What do you do to keep the culture and maintain the culture, uh, remotely? So we, we have team member meetings on Tuesdays and everybody joins. But I think that that is not enough. So what we do is one day during the week, uh, <laughs> I know this is going to sound cheesy, but we we literally do like game shows. And so we draw a contestant and everybody joins. And so we want to play our version of who wants to be a millionaire where an individual can earn uh, up to, a, I think it's a 750 or $1,000 in an Amazon gift card by answering questions and they can poll the audience and they can phone a friend, but those friends are all team members within the organization. We have prices, right games where they play and can do virtually 
whether it's the punch of, uh, where it's punch a bunch and they're punching holes, whether it's Plinko or they're assigning someone to hit a putt uh, for a chance to win the same amount of money or trips to Disney World. Um, and then we also have, you know, get to know people. So we do um, just email scavenger hunts with this individual, you know, laid the, to- laid the wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And then the next day, we'll ask another question about that person. And the next day, and people start to guess and try to con- try to figure out who it is. And it's a nice way to build that sense of camaraderie and sense of awareness of who you're working with. So that when we do have those in-person meetings, it's not, oh, you're Jeff. Okay. It's more of, hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great to see you. Um, and it's not easy. I-, I know it's not. But it's something that's an investment of our time and effort so that people don't feel like they're just a number in a company and on an island. They have to be made to feel that they're a part of that wheel. And without them, that wheel doesn't function the right way. Um, so, so those are so a couple of things that we do. Our birthdays are huge. So even if you're remote, we send you a cake on your birthday and door dash your food. And then you get to pick the food for the office. So everybody who's in the office still has to eat what that person's eating. Um, I'm still waiting to see if we can get in and out burger over to Ohio because that would be <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, but uh, but it's fun. So it's I know it's cheesy and it might sound elementary, but like I said, the inches that we need are everywhere around us to make a big difference. And those help immensely. Jeff, talk about the evolution of your services when you first started the company. Oh man, until now. I, I I it's funny you bring this up because I had someone, we're gonna celebrate our 10-year anniversary next January. And I had someone come up to me. It was an article that was done by a local newspaper when I first came back to Youngstown after I was done with the Cavs and started the agency in 2014. And the Youngstown Vindicator did a story on me and they asked, what's my ideal setup? And in the story, I said, I want like four to six clients and maybe one other person. And that's where I want to stay. Now, all of a sudden, we're over 60 clients. We have almost 30 employees and team members, excuse me. We have 30 team members. We're all across the country. And it wasn't anything that I had envisioned. And the evolution of that, someone asked me, well, how'd you go from what you wanted to and abandon that to where you are? And my my answer is simple. My grandfather told me that we're called to serve. We had people asking to work with us. We had team members coming to us wanting to be a part of what we had going on and willing to wait until we found the right partners that we bring on board to leverage their services. So we never, we never extended outside of our means. Well, that was the most important thing. The growth that we've had has been organic. We've never put ourselves in a, into a position where, okay, how are we going to do this? Who's going to like, how are we going to get this done? The client, the partners would come on board and we would then fill it and figure out, okay, these are, this is the team who's going to service that. And I think that's helped in growing. Now there's been growing pains and we're still going through them. We're still working through processes and trying to perfect them. We're still trying to make sure no one is too much overworked and have that work-life balance. But I think we've done a really good job of organically growing, knowing that we're maintaining the simple idea that we're here to serve those individuals with honesty and integrity. And if we can't do that, we walk away. And trust me, Jeremy, we've walked away from big deals. We've walked away from big clients um, because it wasn't the right time for us, nor did we feel that we could offer the services that they were looking for. And those are hard conversations to have, especially when you look at some of the dollars we walked away from. But the sense of the sense of pride and not putting our team members in a position where they're going to be compromised, but also the honesty with those potential customers and clients so that they know wow, like they, they really do have our best interest in mind, even to walk away. Um, so it, it's that mentality of how we operate, I think has helped us grow, but it had to come without challenges, man. I'll tell you every day, every day there are, there are opportunities to grow. What type of work did you do at the USFL? So the USFL is a client of ours and we're their agency of record for the Canton market. The USFL uh, um, re- the USFL came back in last year after a hiatus, and they became the first spring football professional football league to really have a successful full season in like almost 40 years. And so 
last year, everything was done out of Birmingham, Alabama, except for the championship, which was hosted at the Hall of Fame here in Canton. And we were chosen as their agency to market, advertise, and uh, activate. So this year, they decided to branch out to four hubs. And one of those hubs is Canton. The unique thing about Canton and the Hall of Fame, though, is there is not an Ohio team. So the teams that are playing there are the Pittsburgh Maulers and the New Jersey Generals. So it is a very unique dynamic where we don't have a home team. The market doesn't have a team that they gravitate towards that has their name on it. Uh, but the USFL has entrusted us with not only the marketing and the advertising, but the in-arena activation. So everything from the dance team and the mascot to the giveaways and the activation and fan fests uh, is all the responsibility of our team members at 898 Marketing. And we just successfully completed our first game this Sunday, which was a double header. So we had two games in one day. Uh, we went from 53 degrees and sunny at 9 a.m., to 38 degrees and snowing at kickoff. So anything you could possibly imagine that happened at a football game happened this Sunday. And we walked away with it still with smiles on our faces. So um, next game is May 7th and we're continuing to, to move forward and to, uh, to grow the league as the only professional spring football league in the country. So it's gonna be awesome to see how it goes. Others are trying, others are doing it. But when you take a look at the firepower of Fox and NBC that are, that are behind this league and the talent that's on the field, it's absolutely an amazing product to watch and be a part of. Do you have a fan favorite team? Um, yeah, the Pittsburgh Maulers and New Jersey Generals because they're in our market. Um, but, you know, I, what I love about it is when all of these teams come, we get to talk to some of the players and some of the coaches. I love Skip Holtz. I'm a diehard Notre Dame fan, so Skip Holtz, his, his, his father, Lou Holtz, is a Hall of Fame and iconic coach of Notre Dame. So um, I've been able to talk with Skip when he comes in, and Coach Holtz has been amazing. Um, you know, uh, Coach Horton of the Maulers has won, I think, three Super Bowls in his career as a coach. Um, he's coached for the Steelers and the Browns. Um, you know, there are players on the team like Boogie Roberts and – Darius Victor, who's the reigning MVP, that call Canton home because they're the team. They play for the Maulers and the Generals, respectively. So you get to see these individuals and see the passion behind what they do in playing football. It's it's a game, but for them, it's life. And it's absolutely awesome to take some and correlate some of those elements to, from them and put it into what we're doing for them to make this league successful. And uh, you can become a part of the team. It's fun. It gives you... You know, I know, Jeremy, you play basketball, right? Like it's that camaraderie of a team effort from sports can't be replicated very easily. So that idea of us finally having that and being a part of it is absolutely amazing. Totally. There's a certain bonding that happens yeah, it is. with team members. It is. And you experience it with other things. I'm not saying it's just in sports, but, you know, when you have, you know, I think it happens in like book clubs. I think it happens in when you sit on boards and organizations and community activate activist groups, things like that, that that camaraderie and that unifying element brings everybody together. But when you throw that competition element into it, where there's a winner and a loser, and you've put all that effort in all that preparation, all that practice, and now it's time to shine. I mean, the adrenaline that just rushes through you is is indescribable. So it's good to be good to have that back. Another, um, when I was looking at your website, another company you worked with was Core Home Fitness. What did you yeah. do with, with them? Yeah, so Core Home Fitness is the number one adjustable dumbbell in the country. Um, and they've expanded their reach to more products. And they're, they're, they're competing, right? With When COVID hit, they're competing with the Pelotons and, uh, and the Bowflexes of the world. And they're kind of this outlier that, made a huge splash in the marketplace because of the technology behind their equipment, the affordability of it, and the quality of it. And we had the opportunity to win their business and not only, and we, win, we won their business prior to COVID. So if you can imagine the change in dynamic that we had to go through and the uptick in interest and opportunity once COVID hit, it was Must have been gangbusters. It was. It was. It was unlike anything I've ever seen of any industry. And to not only get through that, but to sustain that 
and to be featured by consumer consumer business reports, to be featured on the Today Show, to be featured by products and companies and Beachbody, you can see their products on with their with their fitness instructors. You know, it's amazing to see where we help catapult them as a partner. And the small bit that we've done from a digital perspective into opening their eyes to what digital offers them from a from a retail perspective, and then the PR side of continuing to grow their business with their message has been absolutely phenomenal. And you can see our case study of what of our ROI on them and the click through rates and how we develop their creative and their their personas to help drive their digital strategy on our website at 898marketing.com. Cool. Yeah, if you're watching the video, if you're just listening to audio, but if you're watching the video, you can see I'm um, at 898marketing.com and the portfolio page. And this one specifically is the Core Home Fitness, just to see some of the stuff here. Um, and then Greenwood Chevrolet, you worked with also. Yeah, so what I love about our, what I love about our agency is we're hyper local, but we're also national. So we can help the the HVAC company like Thompson Heating and Cooling, who's uh, one of the top producers in uh, Trumbull and Mahoning County, all the way to, you know, a USFL. And Greenwood Chevrolet is one of those entities that at one point, um, you know, General Motors had one of their largest production facilities outside of Youngstown in a plant called Lordstown. And because of that, Greenwood Chevrolet was one of the largest Chevy dealers in the entire country especially for their small sedan, the Cobalt or the Cavalier or whatever was being built there. And then unfortunately that plant had to close and it severely altered Greenwood Chevrolet's approach to the marketplace. Um, you know, they started to see the challenge of life without that plant. And while they had retirees and former individuals, you know, that General Motors business was huge for them. And they were looking for a new approach to their marketing and their brand message. And so we entered on the initial level as just helping them with their social media. That was it. That's all we handled was their content strategy. And over time, they started to see that content strategy start to gain momentum and build followers. And, and people were saying, oh, yeah, I saw your post. Or, yeah, I came in off of that. And so they asked us what else we did. And so then we said, well, we do video production. Okay, well, let's do some web series. So we did what we called the extra mile, which was similar to uh, similar to cartoon or to uh, carpool karaoke, right? But it was the owner Greg Greenwood driving around with some of his team members in the car, and we outfitted it with cameras, just like you see on carpool karaoke, and we uh, and we filmed it and did web series, and it brought a human element to the auto sales process. All of a sudden, these barriers of salesperson and customer were starting to be broken. And I was coming in because I liked that individual. I, they were like me. You know, someone had tattoos and they looked like me, right? So we found that the, the automotive ad, the art, automotive industry is so focused on incentives to drive it. And we were shifting that focus and that idea with Greenwood to it doesn't matter about the incentive. It matters about the culture that you have. And the team that is going to be helping those customers find the right vehicle for their lifestyle. And slowly but surely, we took over their digital advertising efforts with programmatic and search engine marketing and connected TV. And then all of a sudden took over their entire operations for their two dealerships. Um, and at the time we took it over, they were they were just outside of the top 10 or inside the top 10 Um and then now they've been the number one selling Chevy dealer for three years in a row, new and used, uh, in their region. And it has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done professionally. But I have to say, working with Greg Greenwood as a mentor and as a friend, and Dave Roberts and Denny Denoy and their entire team has helped me be a better person, not only a better business owner and a better marketer. And it's awesome when they start to call you friend and they start to text you and start to ask you questions, not about their business, but about your life and congratulate you on things. You know, I, I celebrated my 40th birthday right before COVID hit. And one of my best presents was a video of our clients who I call our partners wishing me a happy birthday that was played in our office. And look, I cry at good, you know, good insurance commercials. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. And so when I saw that, I mean, it was, it was like from uh, if you ever seen the movie Scrooge, Niagara Falls, Frankie, 
Like it was, I was just overwhelmed with joy and emotion that these individuals who are business partners looked at us that way, looked at us in a different light. And one of the biggest honors I've ever had was Greg was being recognized by the American Heart Association as a, as like a lifetime achievement award type of deal. And he asked me to do his introductory speech. And that, that really hit home with me about what we do is not just about the ads we create or the markets that we service or the ideas we create and come up with, but it's about the relationships we have with these people who they value us as people, not just as marketers for their business. And it's been that it, it helped put what we do in a new light. And I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity because that, that Greenwood Chevrolet client was the first thing that catapulted us to a whole new level. And honestly, why I'm sitting here with you, Jeremy, without them, I don't know where we would be because that was the first domino that, that has pushed a lot of others to follow. And I'm eternally grateful for them. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that story. What sorry gave it was you, long-winded, what man. Gave I, you, I'm sorry if it was long-winded. No, what gave you the idea for Extra Mile? Um, because so that's two really things. interesting because, I don't yeah, know, so someone's were, like, hey, do video. We can go to your dealership and film some video. And you to- took a totally separate route. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so they were, they, were, they were using a slogan or a, a motto called Trust Driven. And that's what they were going with. And so when we looked at what we were being asked to do, we had to come up with a creative name. The auto mile in their market is about is several miles away from them. They're an isolated dealer who sits off of all of the other, the street where all the other automotive dealers are. So what we thought of was, okay, when we sat and brainstormed creatively, we thought, okay, well, they actually have to drive an extra mile to go to Greenwood. And Greenwood is willing to go the extra mile and do the things that the other dealerships weren't willing to do in the community or for their customers. So um, Bill Russo, who's our um, manager of, of, of content and video production, we were sitting there and we're like, well, why don't we just call it the extra mile with Greg Greenwood? And so they literally were driving extra miles. So there's a literal meaning to the video. There's a literal meaning to what we're asking customers to do. But then there's that other meaning of you can trust Greenwood that will they will go the extra mile for you. And it took off. And all of a sudden, people were saying, you know, I love that Greenwood goes the extra mile. I love that they go. And we turned that into a campaign where we did testimonials. We didn't even feature a car. It was just customers sitting there on a white screen telling their story, ad-libbing about how Greenwood went the extra mile for them. And it just took off. What were you, you know, sometimes filming? Sometimes the best ideas are just, just happen. Yeah. What were you filming when you were in the car? So like the carpool karaoke um yes yeah, so, you know that's they're yeah. singing in there i'm assuming greg wasn't singing in the car what were what was the kind of the theme of what you were trying to capture so we grabbed uh so greg wanted to spend some personal time with these team members who were at his dealership for a long time and so we outfitted the we outfitted the vehicle and we chose different vehicles based off of incentives that were there the inventory levels what we were trying to move that month right so we we outfitted it with three cameras inside the vehicle. Um, and then we outfitted it with two on the outside of the vehicle. And then someone was following for beauty shots. And we mapped out where we were going. So we had about six or seven cameras worth of footage that we had to cipher through to create this 60 second, 90 second interview. And Greg literally just talked to them like they were his friends. You know, appreciate this. What's a story that you like? What's a challenge? How could we be better? You know, it was really showing customers that the owner of the business was asking his team members, how can we be better? And what do you love about working here? And what do your customers love about us? And so getting that, again, pulling back those layers and seeing an unfiltered view of how they run their dealership. And it's not just about well, let me go talk to my manager and see if I can make that happen. It's no, I'll work with you. Let's 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 see if we can see if we can what we can do for you. Um, it, it was a really really interesting take on it, and one that 
we're excited to start bringing back to Greg asked, uh, Greg, Greg asked us, when are we going to do the extra mile again? So if that question comes up, that the answer is very soon. We're right on top of that, Rose. So, uh, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're excited to start bringing that back. So uh, you didn't make them sing. No, no sing. Okay. God, okay. <laughs> no, no offense to Greg. He does a lot of things well, but I'm not going to put, I'm going to put singing in that category. Um, Jeff, first of all, <laughs> I have one last question. Uh, before I ask it, I just want to thank you um, mm. and point people to check out 898marketing.com. Uh, check out the website I and mean, more episodes of the podcast. My last mm. question is, you mentioned process, you know, is big. Mm. Um, I'd love to hear about what's your tech stack look like. You know, maybe think of the software we use you know, sweet process for documenting processes. What what kind of software is in tech stack uh, do you use? Yeah, so we we ran the gamut of all of the the major players that are out there from a from a workflow perspective, and every single one had had something that we needed that it didn't offer. And so, honestly, Jeremy, we said, screw it, we're going to build our own. And we literally built our own workflow process. We call it Bull Dance. The, uh, Jeff Lillibridge, who's a great friend of mine from the Cavs, who's a team member of ours right now and heads up our digital team. Um, I talked to him about it. And I was like, we're paying all of this money out every month for these multiple things that don't do everything we needed to do. And God bless him. He's like, well, I could build it. And so we did a we did a roadmap. We figured it out and we called it bull dance because of the Gil, the movie from happy or the scene from happy Gilmore, uh, where he's riding the bull feeling the flow. <laughs> so that was our workflow. And so we call it bull dance and it's our own proprietary, uh, workspace where that documents comments, approvals, file shares, timesheets, new clients, billing and invoicing everything all within our system. And there's a, it really has, it, it took a while for our team to adjust to it. Um, it took a while, uh, I'm not going to lie. And Lily, so so if, if Lily were on the call, you'll see that we were both named Jeff. We're both have are follically challenged. We both have facial hair. So we recept and go, he's Lily and I'm Riz. So we just cut, shortened our last name. So um, if Lily were on the call, he would tell you probably the hardest thing for him is getting me to use it. Um, <laughs> right? Like, and, and but I, I appreciate it now because of how well it has unified our team that are dis, disparate because of our locations that work on several different clients. But at any point when a team member is out and they have a buddy that they assign for their clients and for the works being done, that individual could hop right into Bull Dance and see everything that's going on and we don't miss a beat. And so I'm eternally grateful for Jeff's vision and foresight to come up with that and, and help us through that. So sometimes it's like it's chat, it's project management, it's CRM, yep. it's everything, everything kind of in one place. Yep. That's awesome. And, well, he built it off at, of, and he built it off a bubble. I mean, that's how he built it. You had me at Happy Gilmore. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> I just, I just want to thank you for sharing your journey, sharing your knowledge. And, oh, Jeremy. Um, everyone, you know, check out more episodes. And this is uh, some a lot of gold gems in there. So thanks, Jeff. Uh, the, the pleasure is all mine, Jeremy. You're very welcome. And I, I, you, you got a great thing going. I can't believe you asked me to be on it. And I'm very honored to be sitting with you and spending some time here today. Well worth it. And I look forward to getting up this morning because of it. So thank you very much, man. You're a humble guy. But thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.